because today we are continuing with the story. Uh, last time I couldn't uh, be present because we were traveling. And so, so, so uh, we will today continue with the story of Sri Radharaman Charan Das there. So he, he was uh, called when he was smaller as Rai Charan. So last time we were talking that he went to Ayodhya first. So I will continue from this part where it says that Rai Charan reached Ayodhya. He was on the uptoe of high expectation as he looked for the saint here and there on the bank of Saraju, Saraju River. Suddenly, he found the saint entering the wood, wood with the wooden bowl, bowl in hand. After finishing his abl ablutions in the holy waters of Saraju River, he saw Rai Charan and said, smiling, Well, are you come, my child? You are welcome. I was waiting for your arrival. Uh, the less, just I want to remind you, the last time when we were reading, actually, uh, he was told that if he goes there to Saraju River, he will meet this saintly person who can help him. So when he arrived, this saintly now person, we can see he already knew that he will come. Rai Charan ran to him and fell at his feet. The saint laid his hand on his head, blessed him, took him by the hand, and led him to his herm hermitage. After Rai Charan had bathed, the saint made him sit in front of him and breathed the mantra into his ear. As the mantra was uttered, Rai Charan quaked vehemently, was shaking strongly. His hair stood on end. Tears flowed from his eyes, and he fell senseless on the ground. On his regaining consciousness, the saint locked him in his arms, and each overwhelmed with bhava, bathed the other in tears of love. Wow. So beautiful. Rai Charan stayed with the Guru for a few days. The Guru taught him the guiding principle, principles of his new life. One day he said to him, Look, I have an impulse from within, a biding of the Lord, bidding of the Lord. So it must be done. You need not stay with me any longer. You must set out on your mission and spread the name of the Lord far and wide in the world. Excuse me, Gurudev. I thought of clinging to your feet and serving you to the last day of my life. That is not to be my child. And so you must give up that idea and make up your mind to shoulder the task. God has been pleased to impose upon you. You say you want to serve me, but what is service if not doing one's pleasure? I shall not be better pleased with anyone, anything else. If you look upon me as your spiritual friend and guide or navigator, you cannot but choose to obey me. 
come, be a good child and do what I say. I will be done, my lord, but the task is great and I am so small. Empower me to accomplish this mighty, the mighty task. Oh, it is done, my child. Fear not and set to work. You are in the hands of God. He will be with you and lead you on. Rai Charan fell weeping at the feet. Just one second. Rai Charan fell weeping at the feet. Uh, Rai Charan fell weeping at the feet of the master. He raised, raised him, embraced him heartily, and blessed him as he bade, bade him goodbye. Rai Charan set out. He traveled, he traveled uh, far and wide till he came to Navadvip. Something in his appearance attracted Jagan Jagadananda Das Babaji. If you remember, we were talking a long time ago about this Jagan Jagadananda Das Babaji, a really mystical person, who took him to his residence and gave him a solitary room for his undisturbed meditation. Now he lived a life of abstraction, out of touch with the men of the world. He bathed in Ganges three times a day, cooked his own food and ate only once in the afternoon. He spent the whole day in the loud chanting of the name of the Lord. Sometimes, he would laugh and sometimes cry, swimming always at pleasure in the sea of love. He was love intoxicated and behaved like one who was gone mad. His host called him Rajan Babu. So from Rai Charan, he became Rajan and was known as such hereafter. Birds of the same feather flock together. At this time, he met another love-intoxicated person, Navadvip Chandradas. Their eyes met and they felt they were old familiar friends. They flew into each other's arms and shed tears. They were in ecstasy. They danced together in joy and shouted the name of the Lord. It seemed they were two only in form, but one in heart. How deep, how perfect the union of their hearts. They became friends forever and would no longer part from each other. Two other devoted souls, Krishna Govinda and Rasa Mohan, felt attracted by Rajan Babu and joined him and joined him. All together decided to go to Puri. They started wearing a chadar and a dhoti and with karatals in hand, dancing and singing the name of the Lord. Rajan Babu led them. He had his own charming way of leading. As he marched, he danced in Sankirtan. The tall figure with hands uplifted and one foot, uh, foot fixed perpendicularly on the other. They were so attractive, these God-intoxicated devotees, 
that they had a large following of men, women, and children as they went. Thus, they marched on. In the evening, they stopped to rest in some village or woodland and ate what Providence gave them. They reached Sakshi Gopal. Rajan began Sankirtana. He began as was his, he began as was his, want to explain the history of the image before him in extempore, extempore verses in the course of Sankirtana. Yeah, yeah, in sp spontaneous verses, extempore. The verses came to him so swiftly that it seemed he was drawing upon memory and singing well-known songs. So exquisite were the songs that they might well be taken to be the classical compositions of some ancient bard of Vaishnava literature. The bystanders were simply charmed and whispered among themselves, Who are these blessed souls? Whence do they come? Who is he, the tall man towering above them all? He is the true likeness and staff of a superman. He has long arms, gracious form, sweet smiling face, and he has about him a heavenly air, which marks him out from the rest of mankind. He is undoubtedly the Barha Babaji, the head of the party, and the others are his followers. So he came to be called Barha Babaji. And we shall henceforth refer to him by this new name. Yeah, so we can see that this, uh, in the end, actually, Radha Raman Charan does, Babaji had, had so many names. Um, it was midnight. All was calm, calm and quiet around. They were lying outside the temple. There came two persons, one white, the other gold colored. And they sat near, near the head of Barha Babaji. The former said, Listen, I come to deliver a mantra, which you are to practice and prefer to anyone, spread to anyone who would be willing to accept it. So saying, he communicated to him Gaura Mantra of 22 letters and disappeared. The night wore on and it was morning. But Barha Baba was weeping all the while. He was out of his mind. He was shouting, Anitai, Janitai, dancing, whimpering, rolling and tossing on the, gr on the ground. He told his companions what had happened to him. He clung to them and cried aloud. They tried their best to soothe him. He came back to himself, but ran at full speed, crying, Anitai, Janitai on his way to Nilacha. His companions followed him. Men wondered at them and wished to inquire, but they were beside themselves with joy and would not rest till they had a look at the radiant face of the Lord of Nilacha. At last, they came to Nilacha the abode of the Lord. 
they went to the temple and saw the Lord. Their hearts were full, and out of the fullness of their hearts, they began to sing. They were entirely lost to the world, lost in the depth of love of God, and their song drew the multitude of visitors to their side. A thousand voices joined in the Sankirtan. It was a scene the like of which was never seen during the last 400 years of the Chaitanya era. The worshippers and the guards enjoyed the scene. Those who came to lo look at the Lord remained to sing or hear the song. Some danced as they stood, some with hands upraised. Next, Barha Baba moved to Gambira, the abode where Sri Chaitanya lived in seclusion. As he looked on the kanta used by him, by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and touched it with his hand, he burst out into sobs and muttered in the fullness of his heart, Have mercy, my Lord, on thy humble servant. So may I serve the servants of thy servants and rest under the peaceful shade of thy sheltering feet. So saying, he swooned away and fell down. His companions hast hastened to help him and restored his consciousness. Now they did not know where to stay and what to eat, for Barha Baba resigned himself completely and depended solely on the dispensation of the Lord. He would never move an inch at his own sweet will, for his will was merged in the will of the Lord, and he himself was no longer his own, but the Lord's. Presently, however, they took their prasad in Narayan Chat, where Prasad was being distributed free on the occasion of some festivity. They were so ill-clad and so humble in their ways and manners that the man who was serving Prasad took them to be ordinary beggars. He made them sit on the public road along with the, with the beggars, and served them prashad on a single leaf, which was torn in the middle. Navadvipdas spread out his bahidvash. Uh, this is... Out of cloth. Uh -huh. His cloth. So he spread out his cloth and put the torn leaf on it. Ah, he put the cloth on the floor. Yeah. Now the Mahanta came with Prashad, saw what they had done, and exclaimed, You rogues, you cannot give yourself a dinner, and you turn Vaishnavas to cast a slur on Vaishnavas. What have you done? Barha Babaji said smilingly, Yes, sir, you are right. We are not Vaishnavas and can never hope to be Vaishnavas. Bless us and pray we may be allowed to be servants of Vaishnavas like your honored self. If your lordship will give prasad to us, uh, us all, 
give us here on my leaf and we should we shall take it all together the mahanta was softened softened and he gave them prashad lavishly so he gave him so much prashad yeah. Another day, they finished their ablution in the Narendra Sarovar and were going to the temple of Jagannath, singing and dancing on the way, when they met a sannyasi at the head of a procession, walking with his silver slippers under a silver umbrella who seemed to be a saint of note in the sacred city. They inquired about him and came to, came to know uh, that he was no other than Bhutanath Swami, in charge of the Jagannath Vallabha at that time. Uh, yeah. okay. Uh, they made obeisance to the saint, and the latter raised his hand and blessed them on the way. They had gone, but a few paces when the sannyasis uh, 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 they had gone but a few paces, few steps, when the sannyasi summoned them back to his presence, called them back, yeah. and at this time, when they came back. And bowed again. The saint, him, saint himself bowed, saying, Namo Narayanaya, Narayana, Namo Narayana, mm. in return and said, Mahatma, may I ask you where you are putting, where you are putting up? Father, said Barha Baba. We have no fixed place for our residence, but at present we are staying at the outhouse of Ganesh Mahanti. Well, well, said the sannyasi, you are no ordinary man. I felt transcendental joy as I looked at you. I think you are an, you are intimate with Sri Krishna Chaitanya, the son of Jagannath Mishra. In fact, from what I can gather from your looks and doings, I think you are an exact copy of Sri Chaitanya in your life and conduct. You are an imitation Chaitanya, I would say. But you see, you have renounced the world. You should not go and stay with a worldly man. Why not come and stay with me at my place? Do you come and occupy a room at the Jagannath Vallabha and sing the name of the Lord to your, to your heart's contents? As you bid us, Maha as you bid us, Mahatma, so it shall be done, said Barha Babaji, and went away singing to the temple of Jagannath. So on the third day, they came and put up at the Jagannath Vallabha, yeah, to, to the great joy of Bhutnath Swami, who was very favorably disposed towards them. A jewel alone knows what a jewel is like, says the Bengali proverb, and it is so true. The recluse came in with matted hair on his head and entered into lively conversation with Barha Babaji. By your leave, your reverence, said the newcomer, may I ask you to which sect you belong? Sect? What sect, my brother? While God is one and all belong to him and him alone. Yes, sir, that is true. But then there are so many different creeds in religion. 
and men follow the one or the other. This is what I mean. Well, the different creeds are only so many different moods, modes of grasping the same eternal truth. The differences cease to exist when the devotees come to face to face with the truth. They rep represent the different schools uh, of thought in our, in our attempt to conceive the divine idea. They are lines of thought, thought which can be and should be united and reconciled into a harmonious whole, which makes up the entire fabric of the perfect religion of all, uh, all the world. Wow, this, this last what, sentence, what Barha Baba, Baba said, when sometime we as devotees can see the differences between lines, even I will not even say different religions, but uh, different lines in Vaishnava culture. And this sentence is so nicely explaining how it's actually, in a way, all same, but different lines uh, in this our, in our connection with the divine. And says that these differences cease to exist uh, when the devotee comes face to face with the truth. And this is, yeah, when you have divine vision, then these differences disappear. Differences which actually are, are visible to us. You want to say something? But uh, so uh, other person continued. But there are these sects, and I would like to know the sect to which you belong. I take objection to the term sect, which implies inclusion of some, uh, inclusion of some to the exclusion of others. For religion is in reality an undivided whole which admits of all these different conceptions at the different stages of spir spiritual evolution. <clears throat> but then there is one thing. Some have climbed the initial steps, some up to the middle, while there have been some who have gone up to the top of the ladder of evolution. Those who are at the top can see the different sets of religions as religious aspirants clinging to, cling, clinging to the ladder at the various stages of spiritual development, and they can harmonize the apparent, uh, apparent conflicts and contradictions and proclaim truth from the pinnacle of God realization. So there are these gurus at the different stages of God realization who have taught their disciples according to their power of comprehension, and they have started the lines of spiritual descendants, which in after times have come to be grouped as the different sects or religion on earth, of, of religion of on earth. There is no sect in the religion of God, who is one. There were no such sects and schisms in the teachings of the great masters, the Loka Gurus. They have come out of the imperfect understanding of the latter disciples later disciples of the great masters. They have come out of the imperfect understanding of the later disciples of the great masters. So, so 
beautiful view. Actually, this immediately reminded me as Mahabhava one time was telling me how spiritual path looks like, like you are climbing a, a hill, but you, you are not climbing like directly up, but you are going spiritually up. And sometimes it looks you are on the same place, but actually you are all the time getting higher and higher in this climbing. And as you are getting higher, your vision changes. You can broaden, yeah, becomes wider your vision. You can see different, you, you can see all the parts and levels which were. Yeah, you see the same things from the higher perspective. Like, like we have Bhagavad Gita, for example. When we read the Bhagavad Gita first time, it was one level of realization of Bhagavad Gita. But through many years, uh, our realization is deeper and deeper. And now, with Guru Dev and with Radha Dasyam family, we can see the so much depth of Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So the person said to him, Thank you very much. I'm so glad that I have found one who is above the limitations of narrow sectarianism. Now I can breathe freely, and I think I can take the liberty of inquiring about the perfect religion of all the world. No more of sects and schisms, but let me know, if you please, the standpoint you would take to understand the perfect religion of the world. My standpoint is that of Sri Chaitanya or Sri Gauranga, who gave us his religion of love and beauty, which is the perfect religion of all the world. Yeah, beautiful. Because love is actually the main theme of all religions of the world. Then, Huh? Then you belong to the Gaurya, Gaurya Vaishnava Sampradaya, don't you? Yes and no at the same time. Yes, because I have accepted the principles of the Gaurya Vaishnavas. But no, because I do not think that the Gaurya Vaishnavas should form a cliche and mar the universe. Click, uh -huh, form a click and mar the universal character of the religion of Sri Gauranga. But who is Sri Gauranga? Sri Gauranga is the incarnation of the Supreme, the High God, who incarnated himself as Sri Krishna in the earlier age. But how can you prove that Sri Gauranga is the Lord himself? No proof like ocular proof that you can see, they say. They saw him and knew him to be the Lord himself. Those who had the eyes, the spirit's eyes, to see him, oh, see him aright, Nityananda saw him and knew him. And so did the other devotees who were spiritually advanced in those days. They do see him and know him to be the Lord. Even now, they who can discern the high spirit with the spirit's eyes. But what is ocular proof to one that is blind? How can you prove it? Prove it to the blind that the sun is up. Yes, to those who have eyes, 
When the sun rises, there needs no ghost to come and tell them that the sun is up. So it is with the Lord. They can see who have developed their spirituality and render themselves fit for God vision. But the blind cannot see. No amount of reasoning will convince, convince the blind man of the existence and the fulgence of the sun. He must wait till a doctor comes and restores his eyesight. And then he can see the sun like those that talk to him about the sun when he could, he could not see. That's it. Come. Will it do? Is this okay? Yeah. The person said, Venerable sire, you may be right when you say, say so from your own point of view. But one may think that you are just evading the question. The blind must be convinced of the possibility if not of the actual existence of the sun, before he can, pers he can be persuaded, pers persuaded to go to a doctor to open his eyesight for a first-hand knowledge of the sun. Yes, but that is second-hand knowledge, you see. And you must remember that this can only persuade you to undertake the task. It will never carry conviction before you have actually realized the truth for yourself. However, I will try. Baba Mahasya, oh, Mahasaya uh, then went on to enumerate the Shastras in which Sri Goranga is mentioned as an avatar. The, the Chandogya the Chaitanya Upanishad, Ananta Samhitas, the Srimad Bhagavatam, Padma Purana, Garuda Purana, and the host of others. The other person was overpowered with emotion. He burst into tears and consigned himself to Barha Babaji, who initiated him and put him on the way to spiritual blessedness. This sadhu was Krishnananda Das, the same who accompanied Baba Premananda Bharati on his way to America for fulfilling his evangelical mission in far off lands. Yeah, we didn't know this about Baba Premananda Bharati. Then to went to America. Hmm. After a few days came Ratayatra, the card festival. It was a great day for Barha Babaji. He sang and danced before the Rata or car or cart, actually, as it went on. It appeared from his bhava and gestures that as he sang and danced, he saw in the Sri Vigraha of Lord Jagannath, the Lord himself, in all his resplendent beauty, smiling at him, who slackened the speed of the car at times to hear him sing and see him dance who slowed the speed and yeah, slowed down the speed of the carts. The cart went on till it was evening and the men were tired. Sri Jagannath stopped to rest for the day. Most of the devotees went away to their respective lodgings or homes. But Barha Babaji would not go. He would stop on the way while the Lord was on the way and partake of the Mahaprasad of the Lord. Four days passed in this way. 
And it was on the fifth day that the Lord reached the Gundicham Mandira, the destination of his journey on the cart. Gundicham Mandira rep represents to the devotees Vrindavana. So the Lord is, has come to Vrindavana after a long spell of absence. Sweet Krishna has come at last. The gopis look and look at his dear face and drink deep of the ambrosial potion in that face divine. Then they open their hearts and begin, begin to pour the pent up contents of an age of separation. Oh, how is he changed? It is not the same loving sweetheart of, as of old. What is the matter with him? Has he forsaken us and given away his heart to another damsel? Barha Babaji was possessed with this sentiment. He was looking at the Lord and shedding tears as he sang to express the pangs or pains of lost love. He wept and he wailed, he cried and made them cry who gathered around him. He sobbed aloud and rolled from one end to the Jaga Mohan to of the Jaga Mohan to the other. The joints gave way, but the flexible limbs were turned and twisted in diverse ways, till breathing itself was stopped and he lapsed into the into a state of insensibility in the intensity of his divine suffering. He knew not what to do and how to bring him back to his senses. When suddenly there came a sannyasi in yellow robes and assured them that Babaji Mahasya, Mahasaya was a saint of a very high order and that the state he was, he was in was hardly to be approached by ordinary mortals and that he could be summoned back to consciousness again if somebody would undertake to sing him a song purporting to be a response from the lips of Krishna to soothe the suffering of his love, love-lorn Radha. The song was sang, and Loi, Lol Babaji Mahasaya started, uh, started up in great joy and showed sign of recovery. Tears, tremor, and horripilation appeared, and the song was repeated again and again till he completely regained his senses and sat erect to the great joy of the bystanders. Mm. So we came to one part. I mean, still have like uh, 50 pages of, of this story about uh, Radharavan Charandas. So I think we can maybe stop on this page 116 now because here starting new story. Con uh, What do you think about today's part of the story? Mm -hmm. Anyone? I really like the part when, when he was talking about religions. This was very beautifully explained. I need the 
Sorry, Dinadel, I I'm working now, so because of that I cannot participate. I'm <laughs> just listening. Sorry. No, no problem. It no was problem. very nice. And then will so be nice. recording. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. beautiful. Yeah, I, 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 was, know, I know. I was hearing, I was hearing, but I cannot uh, participate acti actively because I'm you know. on the work now. Yeah, okay. it's the same for us. Actually, it's the middle of uh, working week and middle of working day. So. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so maybe thank we will so, see somehow thank you so much. to find very different very time for beautiful. this. It was very beautiful. Yeah. Really. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, if nobody has any comment, maybe. 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 Uh, do, you, do you know the background a little bit? That you give can you give some context. So this is happening in Jagannath Puri, and what is about to happen? I don't, I don't know. Can you give a little context? Uh, what do you mean? What is about to happen? I mean, you here are many stories. Like, uh, pages more of of story. Do, are you familiar with uh -huh. that? Or can you give some explanation of of no no the background? Yeah, I didn't read the whole story yet. Uh -huh. We are reading together. Mm -hmm. But maybe I also missed a little bit on the beginning. So, mm. can you maybe summarize what is happening and where they are? And maybe this is. Uh, if like you a, want, uh, I can I can send you PDF of the book. I have the book. This is not the issue. <laughs> mm. Like, uh, do you have some personal connection that this somehow inspired you to read it, or is this just the next one in the in the list? <laughs> No, no, this is not, uh, I mean, this is the s uh, story about the same person continuing. Yes. You know? So I missed part of the last time. Mm -hmm -hmm. So, phew, how I now. Well, listening, I have a little bit in between. That's why I'm asking. Oh, mm -hmm -hmm. Because there summary. is a recording, you know, there is a recording of, mm. of the previous one. You know. so this is the longest story. This is the longest story because this already like fourth time we are reading this story. And I, I think there will be like maybe six, seven more times. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. So if it's so split up apart, it's difficult to follow. Mm. And maybe some um, summary once in a while. Would, and, and giving some context where they are, who they are, where they come from would be good. Just to recap. Mm. No. Okay, now from head now I can't give you this. <laughs> you know, I would have to rem remind myself also. You know, so yeah, this is really long story, so it's not so easy to. Yeah, I mean, so we he's all from Bengal. <laughs> yeah. Now he is from Bengal, you know, and uh, he was uh, born there as Rai Charan, you know, and uh, but uh, now I can't remember all the details from before to give you like summary. We ourselves here also eat yeah. and try to take the like the present. Uh, nectar from each part without the need to connect to the previous things because we would be lost in this whole thing it's because it's huge you can't even you, you have to read it a few times to be able to summarize it because it's like vast uh, amount of, of uh, data that is actually too big to to be able to to uh, summarize in, in a small uh, summary, I don't know. I would need to try to um, find another text about this person and and summarize it shortly because this is just uh, so big, this subject, that it, it's like many little stories uh, collected in one big story. So each time we actually uh, concentrate only on that particular thing that is 
going on at that very moment that we are reading. But probably we'll try next time to say to, to find some summary uh, summary of yeah I mean he was uh, uh, because the story first started with uh, some explanations of his uh, of the miracles he was doing and uh, and then started from his birth again yeah so yeah start uh, they started with uh, miracles like he uh, brought some woman from uh, the dead from dead on the in what name i forgot but he yeah. was like it was, he attended the funeral yeah and then he brought this lady from the dead uh because she didn't uh she utter didn't his, the name of the lord so <laughs> to chant the name of the lord so he felt so compassionate about her so he had to bring her to life again to be able to to make her do this and then she left again but uh that was in the previous um uh, uh reading but today we started from the point where he was searching for his guru find the guru and then uh this this episode uh where we started today was when he actually found this person who could initiate him and that uh, happened spontaneously because both of them got internal uh, guidance from within either through dreams or through uh, some inner feelings and that's how this today's story is uh, developed from that point and when the, we mentioned Mila child that means that he was in Jagannath Puri and also all these uh, events take place in Jagannath Puri. And uh, from what we have read right now, we can have the idea that he and this person that he's talking, they are talking about who was his friend, both of them, they were very similar to Goranga and Nityananda. Obviously, they were very much connected to Gora and Nitai. And uh, so, so this actually is what we... Uh, got from let's a little summary of this reading also what was very interesting how his viewpoint about about religion is that there is one uh, big unity in religion so that the religion is is like universal and only people are those who by their explanations uh, make the divisions because on depending on the level of their understanding that's what he said so yeah. so this is like a short yeah and also we could read a lot about his emotions how he often was feeling strong emotions that he would fall unconscious and uh, he would feel the bala and could, and others around him could feel his bala also and one thing that it which was in the end now what we read that he felt the emotions of radhika also that uh, when krishna came back and uh, how radhika was feeling and only what what could uh, wake him up uh, would be krishna's words so that they sing the song which about what Krishna says to Radhika, what would calm her, and that wake him up. <laughs>